Go ahead. All right, so I thought for your enjoyment, we would make a little unboxing video. Now, I'm so excited about this stuff I just got, so we're gonna do some unboxing. Very excited. Okay, all right. Let's have a look at what we got. Sorry, when I get excited, I break into my Scotsman act then. All right, so, yes, very excited about this. Let's see what we got. Rummage through the bags. Whoa, look at these little beauties. <laughs> That's me. Okay. See what we got. If only you could smell what I can smell. Look at this little lovely. Oh yeah. One of those. And one of those. And one of those. And one more. Ooh, look at these. Guess what I'm gonna have for dinner tonight. Okay. And there's more. got in here. Yes, there's more. Come and got these little cute ones. They look like little babies. But they're not. They're full grown. Okay. And this one literally lost its head. Okay. I think the packaging was done very well. They were all packed very nicely. Yes. Now, look at this bad boy. Oh yeah. Okay. Too big to even fit in the tray. Okay, awesome. All right, so now we're explore, going to explore our ocean delights and we're gonna do some mollusk dissections. All right, and we'll start with these guys. All right, so now we're going to look at organisms in the phylum Mollusca. And organisms in the phylum Mollusca include things like the clams and the oysters and the snails and the slugs and squids and octopuses and the nautilus. And the defining characteristics of the phylum Mollusca is that the animals have unsegmented bodies, they have bilateral symmetry, and their bodies are divided into three major parts. They have a muscular foot, a mantle, and a visceral mass. Now the phylum is broken down into several classes and we're gonna focus on three of those classes. Um, in this dissection, I'm gonna only focus on one of those classes and that's the class Cephalopoda. So this is a cephalopod mollusk and of course it's a squid. So first let's have a look at some of its external characteristics. Again, let's make the distinction between dorsal and ventral surface. So this is its dorsal surface and I'm gonna flip it over and you'll see that's its ventral surface. And as is typical for many animals, the ventral surface is often less darkly colored and often less camouflaged. Now it does vary, but with these guys, I think it shows really nicely that the dorsal surface is darker and the ventral surface lighter. Now, these little dots, these little dark colored dots that the animal has all over its body, they're a structure unique to mollusks um, and maybe cephalopods, but they are little sacs and the sacs are filled with a pigment and the animal is able to make the sacs bigger or smaller. And by doing that, it can change its colors in, in really very remarkable ways. In lecture, we'll look at some videos of cuttlefish changing their colors, but they're able to make these amazing color patterns by increasing and decreasing the size of these little chromatophores, those little um, sacs filled with pigment. So in order to do that, they must have a very complex nervous system, which they do, and they must have pretty remarkable eyes, which they do. All right, so we've got dorsal versus ventral surface all right of the animal so let's have a look at some of these external features <clears throat> so the squids have fins and the fins are of course used in locomotion and to steer the animal to have a look at two of those main body parts you can see them externally this part of the squid is it's kind of like um it's not really a tube but it's an open-ended sac so this is the mantle and inside is the mantle cavity this part of the animal with the head these are the arms, and you can see the arms. These long ones are the tentacles, and <clears throat> if you count them, you'll see that we've got one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight arms, and the arms are all lined with suckers, and they're all about the same length. And then we've got these two long tentacles, and at the end of the tentacles, we've also got some suckers. So the tentacles and the arms, and this head region, and I'm gonna flip it over <coughs> and show you this structure here, which is a very important structure. It's called the siphon. And when we do the dissection, I'll show you a little bit more of the siphon. So there we've got the siphon. So the siphon, the head, the arms and tentacles, they all um, a modified muscular foot, believe it or not. And then inside the mantle cavity is all the visceral mass, all the soft parts. All right. Okay, so they're the major external features of the squid then. Arms lined with these suckers, two tentacles, suckers at the end. And the way the animal feeds is it will find a prey item, maybe a small fish or really anything small that moves that it can fit in its mouth. It will shoot the tentacles out. It will use the suckers to grab on and then it will pull the animal in or its prey with the tentacles, latch onto it with all of these arms and the suckers, and then it will feed it into the animal's mouth. And there's the mouth. Now I'm gonna delve into the mouth a little bit more in just a moment, okay? All right, so as you can see, it's got two very large eyes, and we can look at the eyes in a bit more detail in a moment, but relative to the size of the animal's body, these eyes are huge, and it has a very, very, very good vision. All right, okay, so mantle cavity, fins. Mantle, sorry, insides the mantle cavity. All right, so there's a kind of a core cool external feature. So some mollusks have a shell, some don't, some have lost the shell, sometimes the shell is internal. A squid has a, a kind of an internal shell, and I'm gonna show you that now, and it really is kind of a nice surprise to see. So what you first have to do is get it with dorsal side up, and then you have to get this little pointy part just there. And I'm going to use some scissors and just kind of snip off the point. All right. And then I'm gonna push. Oh, there it is. And you'll see something clear just poke out. Now there's something very satisfying about doing what I'm about to do unless it breaks. But let's just see. Oh, snapped. Hopefully we can get the rest of it out without it snapping. Oh, snapped. That was not satisfying. Oh, there we go. Maybe it's gonna come out all in one go. Look at that. So that's kind of, this is called the pen and it's a little bit like an internal shell. And you can see if I stitch all those parts together, it gives the animal some rigidity, right? It gives the mantle some rigidity. So that's the pen. And now there's no rigidity to it. It's really very, very floppy now. Okay, so next we're gonna go into the mouth and I'm gonna remove some other hard parts of the animal. I'm gonna remove the beak. All right, so. So Andrew, if you want to zoom in for this little part, it's again, really satisfying to remove this. Tell me when you're ready. Okay, and you bring it towards me a little bit. Yeah. And then that way. All That's right. Good. Okay, so you can see in the mouth, there's this little beak and it's a little hard, hard structure. And I'm gonna remove it. There's two parts to them. There's one part there. And there's another part there. There you go. All right, look at that. So that's, I'm not even sure what that is. It's probably a combination of nerve and muscle, but look at those. So those little beaks, they're used to sort of break up little parts of what an, whatever the animal fed on and then feed them down so it can swallow it and go into the stomach, but really pretty satisfying to remove those. All right, so now we're gonna do the dissection and this is probably the quickest dissection um, you'll ever do. It's very easy. I'm gonna flip it over. Oh, look at all that ink. The black stuff is ink and hopefully we'll see the ink sack. Hopefully I've not um, made it use all its ink. What's that? Sh 
cartoony show, cartoony movie Nemo. Finding Nemo. Yeah, that's it, Finding Nemo. And I think the little octopus inks itself. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so got it on its ventral surface. I'm gonna use these bigger scissors and I'm gonna use the blunt end of the scissors so I don't destroy the tissues inside. And you can see that sort of almost little U-shaped part. So I'm just gonna cut right down the middle of that. I'm gonna lift it up if I can, it's a bit awkward. That's it. And I'm gonna snip all the way down. Now, you don't know really what you're gonna get inside. I mean, there are some standard parts, but remember the animal's been feeding on some things and you don't know what it's fed on. And then there's another difference between some of the squid that will Ooh, look at this. Ooh, awesome. Fantastic. Wow. So look at that, that little thin membrane there. That's actually a blood vessel. All right, that's a blood vessel. I'm going to have to snip through that so I can open this up all the way. And the black stuff is ink, and you can really nicely see the ink sack. All right, I'm jumping the gun a little bit, though. Okay, snipperoo down there. Oh, this is so nice inside, i got to tell you. Again, look at the angle I'm putting the pins in, just keeps everything in position. Because this is a slippery sucker, let me tell you. All right, so let's have a look at some of these internal structures then. First, I'll point out the siphon. All right, and again, that's modified muscular foot. There's the siphon. And then you've got these ligaments, they might be muscles as well, that are attaching the siphon to the mantle, and, and they're a structural strength through it, strength thing. <clears throat> so what happens is then, the animal brings in water into the mantle cavity. The mantle itself is very muscly. It contracts the mantle, and that can shoot out water through the siphon in that direction, and that way there's some jet propulsion. All right, it's one way the animal moves, as well as using its fins. Okay, so these frilly, feathery, fluffy structures are, so what do you think these could be? If they're frilly, feathery, and fluffy, that tells you there's a very large surface area, and structures that have a very large surface area very often are involved in gas exchange, all right? So it's aquatic, these are the gills, and the gills are how the animal breathes, it's how it undergoes gas exchange. Now, you can just kind of see it, there's like a thin white line along that gill. Let's see if I can see it along this one. I can't easily, but I'm looking through a thin whitish line. I can't see it on this one, but that would be a brachial vessel because they have a closed circulatory system. Their blood stays within vessels. And of course the blood needs to go to the gills, deoxygenated blood where it absorbs oxygen from the seawater and then the blood circulates to the rest of the body after it's been oxygenated. So they're the gills. Now at the base of the gills, there are hearts. Now sometimes you can get duped on these guys, but they have two what's called brachial hearts. And again, some of the structures are difficult to, to discern and I don't wanna get them wrong, but this, oh, I don't think that's a brachial heart, although it's in the right place. This I don't think is a brachial heart, but it's in the right place, so I can't, see the brachial hearts properly, but they're generally at the base of the gills. So I think there's a brachial heart just there and a brachial heart just there, which are involved in pumping blood along that brachial vessel to the gills. And of course it flows to the rest of the body. All right, so that's some of the um, um, organs involved in gas exchange. Okay, so let's have a look at this one then. So this is, this silvery structure here is the ink sac. And the ink in the ink sac is derived from uh, substances that the squid is feeding on. They're sort of, uh, many of them are melanin based. And you can see about just there is where the opening to the ink sac is. And it's kind of a branch off the digestive system. But if I sort of tease it along like that, and it's often silvery, you'll see that I can remove ink. All right, and that's the perfect place to eject your ink. So the animal, just like finding Nemo, um, uses the ink to make um, the water very cloudy and dark so it can escape from predators. So what it would do is it would release the ink. The ink would then be present in the water that the animal can shoot out through the siphon. It leaves a cloud in the water. And of course, at that point, the animal's jetted away and hopefully escaped the predator. All right, so 
Let's have a look at some of the organs evolved in reproduction. Now, this is a boy, all right? And I can tell because that's the penis. And if I sort of tease this like this, then you can see sperm come out. And that milky substance is the semen with sperm inside. And I can follow that color back. And so that tells me that all of this is reproductive structure because it's all kind of the same whitish color. So these are the testes. Um, I'm pretty sure it's sometimes hard to tell with these guys because it varies in size and shape and whether they're ready for re um, in a reproductive mode. But this is all reproductive system um, for the male and this is its penis. All right, so now let's look at the digestive system. All right, so most of this is involved in digestion. This is also, although I'm not honestly not sure what digestive organ this is, I'm just not sure. It's, each squid is a little different inside and sometimes it's hard to tell. <clears throat> but in order to differentiate the digestive part of the animal from the other parts, I'm actually gonna shoot some dye into its mouth, all right? And it's gonna go down its mouth along its esophagus, hopefully into the stomach, and then we'll see where the dye goes and we'll be able to differentiate um, digestive stuff from the rest of the animal. So I'm just gonna go grab some dye. All right, so I'm gonna use a red dye and a pipette, and this is very hit and miss whether it works or not. Sometimes it works great, and sometimes it's a complete bomb. They've got kind of a weird brain. So their brain is between their eyes, and it forms a circle around um, their esophagus, and it makes a little restriction They've also got a radula, which is a structure that they use for feed down in there as well. So when I push the pipette into the mouth and as far down as I can go, sometimes it just busts through and shoots dye in all other places. But sometimes you um, get lucky and you shoot the dye into some pretty interesting parts of the animal. All right, look at that red color. That red color is just pretty awesome, isn't it? All right, it's not blood. All right, so, I'm gonna see if I can get a little bit of air out of there so I don't shoot air in. Suck up a little bit more. All right, so again, this is very hit and miss. And I might cover up what you can see for the moment, but I just need to try and get this pipette down its mouth in the right place. All right, that felt good. So let's see, all right, on the count of three, I'm gonna squeeze. Now this might be awesome or it might be a total anticlimax, but one, two, three. Ooh, look at that, that is rocking. Yeah, I think that worked real well. Just wish I had a bit more dye. All right, there is more dye, but what I'm gonna do is sh refill the bulb with air. See if I can shoot a bit more in. Oh, come on, baby, you can do it. All right, I think that's about as much as I can get in there, but that was pretty awesome. All right, so you can see, or some you can't see, is the red dye obviously went through a tube. So this is, wow, look at that. at this is that where the dye came in or is that where it comes out because the anus is here somewhere yeah look at that so I'm gonna see if I can push that aside oh, it's all attached so we can get rid of some of this ink yeah that's awesome All right, so that was really pretty spectacular. So the dye went down, the esophagus is underneath a lot of this, must have gone down into the stomach. This is cecum and that's a little branch off the stomach. And then it kind of makes a U-turn. So it goes down, turns around and then comes right out. I'm assuming that's the stomach. I've never actually seen it fill up like that. But anyway, this is the last part of the gut and this is where the anus is. And you can see the opening of the anus is right next to the opening of the ink sac. And that makes sense because it's gonna expel its waste right next to the opening of the siphon. So it goes out the body and obviously doesn't linger in the body because that would be kind of nasty. All right, that was awesome. 
yeah, that was really awesome. awesome. So I'm gonna see now if I can just sort of flip this over a little bit. I wanna see if I can see any of the esophagus. I don't think we will see it, but it's worth looking anyway. No, it's buried. It's buried in there somewhere, it's deep in there. All right, anyway, that was rocking. So some of these organs you have a hard time differentiating, but it was really nice that we could see some reproductive tissue, penis, and there's the testes. Gills with brachial vessels, there's a really nice brachial vessel there, I just uncovered it brachial hearts are in that region. Ink sac, which is again is a branch off the, um, off the gut, and you can see the gut kind of goes down, makes a U-turn, and then comes back out. That's, that's really cool. All right, now I want to look a little bit at some nervous tissue. So I'm gonna push this aside, all right, and I'm gonna wash off some of the ink. And this is super nice and super clear. But this is called a stellate ganglion. So there's the ganglion and you can see these white fibers coming off on nerves. All right, and you can also see nerves go off on this direction. Now if I flip it on this side, ooh, actually it's really nice the way the ink is, it looks even better. But you can see the ganglion there. They've got two of them, one on each side. There's some symmetry because they're bilaterally symmetrical. There you can see nerves that branch off onto the mantle. And you can see other nerves here. So they have quite a complex nervous system. Their brain, remember, is between the two eyes. And so each one of those little chromatophores, those sacs that fills up, is coordinated by the brain. And there's a nerve that goes to each one of those little sacs. And so this stellate ganglion sort of acts as a relay station to allow for the coordination of everything that goes on in the mantle. That's movement and it's um, sort of camouflage and coloration. All right, so I think that's it for all of the structures I wanted you to see inside the squid, at least the male squid. So what I'm gonna do is I've got three other squid and we're gonna open up those quickly and see if we can see a difference between males and females. But that was rocking. All right, so we've got three other squid. We're gonna open them up and see if we can see how they differ from the one that I just did. Um, now, I'm gonna be kind of gentle with these because Andrew's hungry and this is his dinner later. Mm -mm -mm. Um, yep, that's what calamari <laughs> is, right? We take the mantle and we chop it and that's what forms the rings. All right, so I'm gonna see if I can pull the pen out of this one in one piece first. There's something very satisfying about it. Kind of like the wishbone in a turkey. Yes, yeah. it is. Oh, duped again. All right, got three more. Come on, baby. Woohoo! There you go. Got the lot. Look at that. Beautiful. So obviously, if you buy these at the market, make sure you remove the pen before you make your calamari. All right, so I'm going to flip this one over. Ventral surface. Oop, inked itself again. Ooh, awesome. So this is definitely different to the other one inside. Snip that, snip that. All right, let's see if we can get rid of some of the ink. All right, so females then have these very large glands here called nidamental glands. And there's the kind of a paired structure. And these have a role in laying down the shell on the eggs. And you can also see the reproductive tissue, which is down here, looks very different. It looks almost granular. And you can see the beginnings of eggs down there as well. But 
the non-reproductive part of the animal is very, very similar. There's the gills, of course, there's the ink sac, there's the siphon, and I'm gonna see if I can shoot dye into this one just to highlight some of the non-reproductive stuff and you can see exactly how much of the animal um, is devoted to reproductive structures. So again, I'm gonna see if I can fill up my pipette with the red dye. Let's get a little bit more. All right, I think that'll do. So I'm gonna remove the beak, because that's uh, too satisfying not to do, but it's also a restriction. There we go, both came out at the same time. All right, that went in very easily. So fingers crossed, let's hope, see what we get. One, two, three. Oh, that was a total anticlimax. All right, let's see if I can get some more in there. It's my rubbish little bulb look. Ooh, so that is all coming out of the anus. So it went in somewhere, did its U-turn, and then came out. Um, the fact that it didn't go down to this part of the animal says that all the digestive stuff is underneath it. And I could probably, well, what happens is that the dye diffuses. So I'm gonna see if we can remove some of, I'm gonna try and do this quickly. Oop, there we go. So, oh, there you go. There you can see digestive structure. If I can tease the dye down. So there's digestive structure, the cecum under there, and all of this stuff on the top has to do with reproduction. Nidamental glands, and these are the ovaries of the animal and other related reproductive parts. Okay, that was kind of cool. And then you actually saw, again, the anus is right there at the opening where the ink sac is. All right, that was pretty cool. Okay, so great. So now we've seen the difference between males and females. All right, so when I saw I could actually buy one of these, I just couldn't resist it. I really couldn't. And I'm not quite sure what we're gonna find because I've never actually dissected one of these, but again, I just couldn't resist it. It's just brilliant, isn't it? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight arms. Mm, so it's different to the other one, but similarity. Look at that big long tentacle, that's actually broken off there. Great big long tentacle broken off there, but look at these suckers. Now, you probably can't see this, but the rim of that sucker almost looks like it's toothed. So it shoots them out and it really can grab onto stuff. And these suckers have to be super efficient because think about almost everything that lives in the sea is sort of slimy and slippery. And these guys can't let it get away. If you can imagine trying to grab hold of a fish with these suckers. Anyway, it's gonna, with the tentacles, it's gonna pull it in to the mouth, and I bet it's got a nice big beak. Whoa, look at this. That's just brilliant. So I'm gonna see if Andrew can zoom in a little bit. Looking good, all right. Just look at that. I mean, that's some serious business there, isn't it? It's quite hard. I know you can't get a feel for how hard it is, but I'm gonna pull it out, see if it will come out easily. I don't know if it will or will not. Oh, come out easily, that was kind of surprising. Look at that. Right, so that's gonna chomp up whatever it is the animal's eating into little bits so it can swallow it. Look at that, that's some serious business there, isn't it? Now usually when it's dark in color, that's often melanization, it's often melanin. And I don't know if that contributes to the hardness of these, but anyway, usually dark brown pigments are melanin. Big old beak there, that's awesome. All right, okay. So, dorsal surface, of course. Shall I tempt the pen? I'm gonna. Why? Because we can. All right, Let's see if we can get the whole pen out on this. That would just be awesome. Mm, or brilliant, as the Brits would say. Okay. Come on, baby. Oh, total 
little anticlimax there. I'm going to see if I can snip along the top of it. Now, if you were a cuttlefish, which are related to these guys, whoa, look at that. Okay, that is killer. All right, let me make sure I'm not missing out anything below. I don't think so. Oh, look at that. The whole thing's coming out. I think. Look at that. You can see it gives the animal some significant rigidity. Mm, stuck. Oh, there we go. So slippery. <laughs> the gift that keeps on giving. Look at that. That's awesome. That's the pen of the animal kind of a reduced internal shell to give it rigidity. All right, so now we're gonna flip it and I'm gonna open it up just like the other one. I have no idea what we're gonna find, but it seems like everything's the same, just bigger. Look at the size of that siphon and all the ligaments that are holding it in place. Because think about the, the pressures involved with water going in there, the whole mantle contracting and then shooting water out of the siphon. Now it moves water in and out to ventilate the gills, right? But it also moves water in and out very quickly in order to move fast. All right, wow, look at that. Woo. It's quite different to the other one. Maybe it eats different things. So crikey, you can see these, look at those vessels, wow. I wish there was a way to shoot a die in those, but those vessels are really nice. Unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to Oh, wow, look at that. Good grief, that's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. Look at these vessels, how big they are and how nicely they branch. Crikey, I wish we could fill that up with dye. I don't know if we can. Um, all right, so gills looking really nice. See if we can find the brachial hearts at the bottom. The gills, they're just kind of like sacs. So the brachial heart is gonna be right just there and they're usually quite kind of flimsy little sacs. All right, really obvious ink sac there, okay. So it looks like ink sac here, and this looks like the gut, the last part of the gut. Both are openings in the same place, just at the base of the siphon, all right? So you can expel your icky contents and ink, just like that. There you go, squid poop, all right. So some of this is digestive, some of it is reproductive. I'm not seeing a big nidimental gland, and I'm not seeing what looks like eggs, so I'm gonna guess this one's a male, and we don't have two. Um, not quite sure what that little curly structure is. Again, I've never done one of these. Wow. All right, again, I'm just not quite sure. I am gonna shoot some dye into it, just because we've got it here and we can. All right, so let's see what we get then. That seemed to go down. All right, that went nowhere. I'll put a bit more in. That was a bust. Ooh, not a complete bust. mostly a bust. So when I say not a complete bust, it looked like I got into the vascular system just there. And there's some of the red dye in a vessel that we probably- the bottom there too, Dennis. Oh yes. All right, no, thank you. Not a bust. So, wow, look at that. Oh, that is killer. All right, that's going in a vessel. We'll see if we can tease it along and see where it goes. Hmm, I think it's in a vessel, maybe not. Take me a while to figure out what's going on with this guy, but I don't know if that's a vessel or not, but obviously some went in there. I don't know if I, don't think I got the gut. I think I broke through it somehow. Um, anyway, but this is all gonna be gut. So we could chop into that, which I think I will because we can and see maybe what the animal's been eating. Oh, no, let's see the stellate ganglion. This has got to have some really big ones. 
or not. <laughs> So there, you can see it and you can see the nerves. It's not quite as visible as the other one. But there should be some symmetry and it will be the same on this side. Again, you can just about see the ganglion and the nerves branching off. But all right, so let's see what's in this large silver sack. It's got to be its stomach and we're going to make a whole massive mess now and see what this guy's been eating. Ugh. Well, <laughs> it's just mush. I'm going to see if I can go back up here. That's got to be his stomach. I'm trying to see if I can come out the mouth. See if I can go in this way. There we go. Yeah, so it looks like stomach. So I don't know how long the food's been in there, but obviously that's what the food looks like once it sits in its stomach. More of the digestive system. More of the digestive system. Obviously reproductive. That must be the testes, it's a male. All right, so I think we're gonna wrap this guy up. I could continue poking around for a, for a while. Um, but this is what dissection and exploration is all about, is you take something you've never really looked at before and then you start exploring it and you start to figure out what structures are, what their function is, there are certain clues even if you don't know, and then you can learn more about the animal. Um, yeah.